So this is me. I spent nearly 20 years as an athlete, and it's an experience that I wouldn't change for anything. But as I got older, I noticed that while I was accepted for my skill on the court, I wasn't always accepted for my skin off of it. Well, I found out that I wasn't alone in my feelings. We begin this series with the fan game, where I spoke to several different local black athletes who tell me that there's always two very different games they're playing. In one, there are sports heroes. In the other, they're nothing more than performers. There's two games that black athletes play. The first one is on the field. When we're adored, we're admired, and we're praised. You know, in, in that game, we forget that we're black. All that matters is whether we win or lose. And then there's a second game. I think we all win. Ah. A mass protest by pro athletes. To get out of the tunnel. To kneel. Jerseys were set on fire. When we aren't wearing our uniforms, and suddenly we're the average black man or woman. That game, that second game, is about survival. And sometimes it's easy to forget which game we're playing. I get the messages, the DMs. Uh, you suck. I hope you go back to Africa. I bet my grandfather raped y'all. These are the same people that the show same, up to the mm -hmm, The same people that show up to the games. The same, I've literally ran into some of the people and told kids, get the f out of my face. Colin Kaepernick kneeling to protest police brutality in black communities. The reaction from the country was a shock. I thought it was a safe place. I, we thought that we were accepted. My youth mentality was that I don't want to ruffle any feathers. When did that change? When Kaepernick didn't get another opportunity to be in the NFL. Disgusting, disgusting. We're the ones paying for these games. Quit watching the NFL. When we would lock arms, they would show a video to Sandra Bland, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd. It was to a point where it was so overwhelming is that to the point where you lost track of why you were playing. I allowed myself to be used <laughs> by these people who only wanted you to be successful because they were getting something out of it. There are varying opinions on this. Never again will I watch. Overpaid rich kids. Very concerned about these people taking a knee. What's more scary, an undercover racist or an uneducated racist? They're going to come up to me, hey, Amber, can I have an autograph? <laughs> the minute you take off that jersey and you treat it totally different. But the whole reason we played the WNBA season 2020 because of Breonna Taylor. None of the officers involved are directly responsible for Breonna Taylor's death. And our investigation found that Mattingly and Cosgrove were justified in their use of force. Is this really America? How can I feel safe? We escape by using sport. If it's anger I was feeling that day, go to the gym. If it was sadness I was feeling that day, go to the gym. And nowadays, you can't distinguish it. The safe haven itself is damaged, it's destroyed. That so you question, who's next? One moment, I'm at the game, and the, the white fans and the you know the white people they are cheering for me, like they loving me. Then it, it changes. It's like instantly walking home, and you know police officers come up asking me questions: Where are you coming from? What are you doing? Why are you dirty? We can't get angry and show those type of emotions Why? because we end up in jail, jail or dead. You're going to be killed. I did not watch um, the video of Jacob Blake. Mentally, don't think um, that I could just like handle it. Sometimes I'm going to practice and I'm still feeling just the weight of everything that's going on. How am I supposed to like do my job right now? I was always this place where I was like, okay, I can go and just like forget about everything that's going on. And now it gets harder and harder. 
Basketball was my safe haven. It was a form of poetry for myself, a form of peace. African American athletes, all athletes, their identity is tied up in, in terms of what you do. And as long as you do well, you're protected. Do fans amplify that? In some ways, they put them on a pedestal in a particular situation, but they don't see them at, uh, for who they really are until they get off the field or they cease to perform. Being an athlete gave me an extra sense of privilege and it's sort of shielded me from things that I probably would have otherwise run into. But it does not always protect you from getting some type of punishment that your white teammate wouldn't have gotten when you guys have done the same thing. Definitely protects you from being killed. You still feel like you have that protection? No, I, I don't have that protection anymore. I hope you never know the pain of your child being murdered 191 days in a row. So we got a chance to talk to Breonna Taylor's family, kind of pierce your heart. But one thing I won't forget is the pain that you hear in the voices. What do we do? Do you see yourself in Breonna Taylor? Oh, for sure. When I look at her and I look at her smile and I look at all the things she had accomplished before she passed, it's almost like, that's me. It taps into your collection of memories. And I'm driving and I see a cop, I will get three or four lanes over where I'll slow down so I'm not in the same vicinity. My dad would always tell me about how he would get stopped for driving while black, for just having an air freshener hanging from his rear view mirror. Like every day you wake up and you never know, is it gonna be somebody in your family that's next? It's very stressful. Problems sleeping, difficulty with appetite, irritability. It can chip away at your own coping strategies, especially when you depend upon those coping strategies to keep you healthy. No matter where you're going, no matter what you're doing, I'm always looked at as being black. I'm more aware of it than I ever have been. I continue to ask is, when will it change? What needs to happen to change? Oscar Robertson has now scored 2,539 points. <laughs> I kept asking my teammate, uh, Tom Peck at the time, come on man, let's go to the Coney Island. And he kept telling me we couldn't go. So finally one day he set me down, he said, George, black people cannot go to Coney Island. Just like the fans had with, with me, said, uh, you know, I'm gonna enjoy this basketball game. I'll do racism Monday morning. Until this day, I never, never set foot in Coney Island. Jackie Robinson played here in 1947. He was allowed to stay in the Netherland Plaza Hotel. He wasn't allowed in the restaurant because the proprietor said, we don't want the white patrons to feel uneasy about your presence here. And by the way, don't use the swimming pool. So eight years later, the big pool, Coney Island, is desegregated, but George Wilson wouldn't use it because frankly, he felt like it shouldn't have had to come to that. And that's the dichotomy between between being a star on the court and being a pariah off it. The injustices which we have experienced on the buses. Race relationships in the rest of the world still hadn't got that good, especially down in Mississippi and Alabama and all that. And here we we were playing for the NC2A. And they used to go up on short vine, there's one bar. One day Fred Durkin can went up there by himself. The owner of the place looked at Durkin and he said, well, where's your tall black friend? And I hope you don't bring that N-word with you again. How do you feel seeing all the younger athletes protesting now? They are doing it for a reason. We couldn't do it back then. We got punished. That very thing happened to Oscar Robertson. And to Oscar Robertson, this game basketball. And he said something in a Sports Illustrated piece. In some cases he couldn't go into clubs with his teammates, uh, white teammates. Uh, he didn't feel welcome. He was, the coach called him in and said, Oscar, you can't say those things. For George to have spoken out that way in 1962 could have been the end of his world. It was going into my second year in the NFL. We were up at Eden Park. Eric Thomas, he was playing his music in his car as we were catching the ball. Cops just came out of 
nowhere. It resembled a tactical uh, maneuver because you saw two coming here, two from the left, two from the right, two from behind us. It was eight police officers for two guys catching a football in a park. We knew we were, okay, this was not a friendly visit. We all just felt humiliated. We felt like we were second-class citizens. I knew then, and as well as today, that being black in America, sitting black, walking black, running black, driving black, you always have a chance of one of those police officers decided, well, I'm going to pull him over for a blank reason. Officer Stephen Roach shot and killed Timothy Thomas. Riots that made headlines around the world. It was just after the, the riots here in Cincinnati. Ricardo Williams, who won a silver medal at the Olympics, came here to fight in Cincinnati. Ricardo Williams Jr. I wrote that it would be a, a great example for Cincinnati, for the black and white community, and watch this young man fight. I think it, it helped heal things, but it didn't change things in the way I hoped for in Cincinnati. People marched to remember Sam DeBose, who was shot and killed last summer by a University of Cincinnati police officer. Every piece of clothing Kaepernick wears in the match, you'll see Sam DeBose's name. About his refusal to stand during the national anthem. We should understand that this is not a selfish act. The players are making more money. They could ride off into the sunset and say, I've got mine. I'm good. They're not doing this for themselves. They're doing it for their communities. Joe Morgan, the red second baseman, big red machine, he said, people will remember nothing of what you say, a little of what you do, and everything about how you make them feel. There's a looper. And these athletes have made us feel great. So if you made me feel good in, in that, why can't I feel good about you off the court? Well, sports has always had this way of bringing different people together despite their differences. And every athlete in this series tells me they still want that, but in a new way. A way that allows them to be more than just performers, but seen as human beings who are doing what they love and caring for the issues near and dear to their heart. And they tell me that's the only game they want to play. I'm Jasmine Miner, reporting for WCPO 9 News.